Hello everyone and welcome to Roadmap. Today's topic is respiration in plants and animals part 1. And if you like the video, don't forget to click on thumbs up button and also don't forget to subscribe. You can also give your suggestion in the comment section. Topics to be covered are introduction, respiration, types of respiration, respiration in plants, respiration in animals, respiration system of human beings, mechanism of respiration, movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now coming to the introduction. As you all know that living organisms require energy to carry out various metabolic activities. As we know that we get energy from food we eat and it is very important for our survival. As well as for the survival of plants and animals, they require energy. So all living organisms require energy and this energy comes from the food we eat. The transport, excretion and the reproduction. The immediate source of energy for all plants and animals is found in the food we consumed. Respiration is a major process involving the release of energy. So when we eat the food, release of energy takes place which is utilized for various biological functions. During respirations, what happens exactly? Have you ever wondered? Cells modify the organic food which is glucose in the presence of oxygen and this process is called as oxidation of food. So what happens exactly during the process of respiration is the release of energy takes place and it is converted for the various use of biological functions and then the cells modify the organic food in the presence of oxygen which is called as the oxidation of food. The oxidation of food in this process of oxidation of food, carbon dioxide, water and energy are released as waste products. So these are the excreted products and respiration helps in releasing energy for carrying out vital functions which is necessary for the maintenance of life. So this is what the respiration is all about that we require food for to eat and then it carries out various metabolic activities and then it is converted into the biological functions and then the cells modify the organic food which is present in the form of oxygen and then the carbon dioxide water and energy are released as waste product. So this is all about the respiration. So let's learn exactly by definition what respiration is. Now coming to the respiration, what you can see in this diagram, what, what you can imagine, just think, what, just think from the diagram that what will be the definition of respiration as what, from what I can, have said earlier, try to think about it. See, this is also one of the diagram which shows you something. Think about what respiration is all about. The process of taking oxygen into cells, using it for energy release and then eliminating the waste products is called as respiration. So as you can see from the diagram here, what the boy is doing, he is blowing. So the carbon dioxide is given out and he is taking in the oxygen. What we humans do? or what the living organisms do. They take in the uh, oxygen which comes from the plants and they give out carbon dioxide which is used by the plants. So this is what the respiration is all about. The process of taking of oxygen into cells, using it for release of energy and then eliminating the waste products like the carbon dioxide and water is known as respiration. Respiration is a slow process and there are various enzymes which help in the process of respiration. Respiration is similar to the combustion or burning. There are few, few differences which come under respiration and combustion which we will learn later. But this is about the respiration. 
the basic definition of respiration is what we take in is called as and what we give out is called as a respiration now there are different types of respiration there are two types of respiration which are very important aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration aerobic respiration takes place in the presence of oxygen and it is carried out in bodies of almost all living organisms and plants in aerobic respiration there is complete oxidation of glucose as you can see that the glucose and oxygen is converted into carbon dioxide water and energy so in aerobic respiration there is complete oxidation of glucose carbon dioxide water and energy are released the energy is liberated during aerobic respiration is much more than that which is released in anaerobic respiration now let's learn about anaerobic respiration anaerobic respiration takes place in absence of oxygen so it is called as aerobic respiration is where the presence of oxygen is taking place and anaerobic respiration where the absence of oxygen in anaerobic respiration there is complete oxidation of glucose carbon dioxide ethyl alcohol and energy are the end products the energy released during this process is much less as compared to that which is released in aerobic respiration so this is basic difference of aerobic and anaerobic respiration that <coughs> that the energy is less as compared to that of aerobic yeast and some bacteria show anaerobic respiration anaerobic respiration microorganism present in food and alcohol causes fermentation the most well known example of fermentation is seen in wine and beer so wine and beer are uh, the products from which um, by the form process of fermentation anaerobic respiration takes place in muscles of human beings during strenuous physical activities like running cycling heavy weight lifting and heavy exercises the demand for oxygen during these activities is much more which the body is unable to supply anaerobic respiration takes place in which glucose is partially decomposed to produce lactic acid accumulation of lactic acid in the muscle causes fatigue and pain when you get relief from pain after a hot bath or massage have you under, have you wondered why this is because of this reason lactic acid is completely broken down to carbon dioxide and water by aerobic respiration